Um, so I don't know how much you know about catch, but I'm going to go through it fairly quickly and try to focus uh, more on um, what you can do when you get phone calls about the situation. CATCH stands for Citizens Against Technological and Community-Based Harassment. So we're talking about two different things. One is technological harassment and the other is what we call community-based harassment. So I'll explain what they are to you. Um, the, the first one I guess I'll look at is, is called um, community-based harassment. We also call it gang stalking or group stalking. Um, and what it involves basically is um, groups of people stalking an individual. And um, they do it in such a way that it's very subtle and so that if a person talks about what's happening, it looks like they're nuts. Um, it's, uh, it's basically according to uh, one, one man, a um, private investigator in Florida named David Lawson, um, he, heard, he heard them on, on a scanner one night and uh, they, were, uh, they were talking about meeting at a restaurant. So what he did was he went and sat in the restaurant and, and kind of listened to what they were talking about. And, and uh, he said that he infiltrated these groups both in Canada and the U.S. and um, that uh, the techniques that they use originated with the Ku Klux Klan. Um, a lot of the harassment is a psych psychological in nature, more than directly physical. So what happens is um, people uh, can't really report a single incident because it doesn't sound like much. Um, it's something that, that is based more on, on repetition and, and conditioning. So for example, um, Let's say for several weeks in a row, every few days, you found a dead animal on your front lawn. Not just once, but over and over and over again. And then our, uh, um, one of the things that, was what, that uh, would happen at my house when I lived in Guelph was that there was a lot of vandalism of, of my house, different things outside. I didn't really think much of it at the time, but once I realized what was happening, uh, it, made, it made things that hadn't made make any sense to me suddenly made sense. And, um, but you know, there were, there were times when, when I wondered if I was losing it. You know, I, I thought, maybe it's just, I know how a person's perception can be, can be skewed sometimes. And, and, uh, um, you know, there were there were moments in time where I wondered if that was the situation, but what ended up happening was uh, I got fed up one day and I got a, a video camera. And the day that I got the video camera, I got some footage of, of what was going on that I didn't completely didn't expect to get. Like it was, it's the only thing that ended up validating the situation. I thought, oh, finally, you know, I. I can see that something really bizarre is going on, and I have it. I have it on tape, and so on. So, I'm going to leave some of them here, but I have. It's only five minutes of footage on a DVD, but I've got some pictures. Um, you probably can't see it all that well, but this this is the main one. This guy kind of watching me from behind the bushes there, right? He's kind of peering out from behind. Um, I took the video camera. It, it's, uh, it was that size, and I had it covered completely in a black cloth so that there wasn't anything reflective, or in fact, you couldn't even tell what it was. Um, and I was sitting in my car. This is just the hood of my car. And I, and I played with the zoom, and I zoomed in, and I didn't even realize the guy was sitting there because I couldn't see him when I was sitting in my car. But I zoomed in and I found him on the viewing lines and I thought, well, I'll just sit here and see what happens. And I ran the tape for five minutes. Um, and a number, of, a number of things happened, but uh, this guy would uh, give a hand signal. He would either 
he would either point at something or he would go like this, right, like shrug his shoulders. And then either someone would come up on a bike or come up walking up or a car would come up. And um, so the first thing that happened was these ladies walked up, and I don't know what happened. They both tur they turned around and looked in my direction. And then this lady actually pointed at me, but there's absolutely no way um, from where they were that they, they could... I'm just sitting in my parked car, right? I'm not doing anything. Um, and then this white car came along. He gave a signal. White car came by with a missing hubcap. And then, and then I didn't realize this because I couldn't tell from sitting there, but after I reviewed the video, I, I realized that the white car came back a second time and then the white car came by a third time, like all within five minutes. Um, this guy, right from, right from way, way off, about 100 feet away, but because I had the zoom on that corner, was, was, was watching where I was sitting. As soon as he walked around the corner and watched me the whole time, rode up the wrong side of the road, right towards me, watching me the whole time. So these people didn't know, obviously, that I was videotaping them or else they... But they were perturbed. And, and what I realized later was that this was the first time in the three years that this had been taking place that I hadn't gotten in my car and driven away the first time because I was taped. Otherwise, I would get in my car and I would leave. Now, these people do all kinds of things, and I can't even... I can't even begin to kind of summarize what happens to different people, but in different areas there may be different tactics that are used. The point is, is to let the person who's being stalked know in one way or another. Once they know, they can do pretty much anything, and the person knows they're there, they're hyper aware all the time when they go out of this kind of thing. And so sometimes incidents will happen that have nothing to do with, with these people. But the, but the person who it's happening to is, is so sensitized to the situation that everything looks like it's this, right? And I know that I struggle constantly with saying to myself, you know, you don't know for sure, you can't know for sure. Um, certainly in this case, it was pretty clear what was happening. But in, in other cases, you don't know. So part of this is, is a is to undermine a person psychologically. And not only that, but they, they, they call someone, they tell their family, the family immediately wants to commit them because they say, well, groups of people are, are stalking. And, and it looks like paranoia. So it's pretty effective, actually. People get so stressed by the situation that they lose their jobs. And um, they never, never really gain credibility. What's the point behind that? Why, why would they do that? Is there a reason that you find out why they were stopping you? Well, in my case, I, I can't come up with a, a clear reason, mm -hmm. but I suspect I just pissed off the wrong person in the wrong place. I mean, I used to be very outspoken, and I'd speak my mind and, and that kind of thing, and I think that um, um, I was told by a number of, of people that, that grew up in Guelph, that Guelph is a mafia town, and yada, yada, yada. So I don't know if there's a connection there, but it started there. Mm -hmm. And um, so it would make sense. That's the only thing that sort of makes sense to me. In other, in other situations, it's more obvious. It's, an, it's someone who suspects their ex has, is trying to get back at them, or in one woman's <coughs> case, she was a whistleblower for a local drug dealer, and then, and then it started to happen to her, and... So sometimes there are reasonable explanations, for sure. Um, sometimes there aren't, and I would suspect in some cases it may not be happening. But I'll, I'll cover that later. Um, so I refer to that as gang stalking, but there's going to be different terms used by different people. Um, the other thing, which I have to cover really, really quickly, is um, I wanted to leave some time basically to to talk.